Maybe I've got a hotel. Yeah, I wish I didn't. I'd much, I'd much rather watch Copenhagen from off my couch with a big. Yeah. Um, and uh, you've been living in. I, I met the Chinese minister uh, yesterday, and and he said it will be ambitious, it will be bold, it will go well beyond uh, what what China has already uh, committed to. Um, the world needs the deal, first of all, because just over a year and a half ago in Bali and in Indonesia, countries launched a negotiating process which is set to complete in Copenhagen. And I think if you commit to finishing something in December, then you should finish it in December. Um, secondly, we have a relatively small window of opportunity in terms of shifting from emissions growth to emissions decline. So we really need an international agreement that will put global emissions uh, on, on a different path. Thirdly, we're already seeing impacts of climate change, quite severe impacts of, of climate change in developing countries, and we need to come to grips with those. And fourthly, and, and not finally, I think if we fail to reach an agreement in Copenhagen, it's just going to make it a lot more difficult afterwards. Um, and it, 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 this is not the best time to go to the Senate with something that, that costs money. But that's ironic as well, because I think, uh, you know, President Obama very clearly saw investment in green jobs as a way of getting out of this economic crisis. So to then see tackling climate change as, as a cost issue is not, not really right, I think. Um, I think we can do uh, a deal in Copenhagen. I think you need to be realistic about what that deal can, can encompass because time uh, is running out. But I have at the same time the feeling that, that the, the spotlight, including your spotlight, is focused on climate change in a way that has never uh, happened before. Um, so we've got the politicians in, in, in the headlamps um, and, and let's make sure that they, um, that they deliver.